Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today I am using the Big and Bold Slimline Ice Cream from the Colorado Craft Company. You guys um, know from my recent videos that we um, celebrated some July birthdays and so I needed some more kind of uh, gender neutral, maybe more on the side, masculine side of um, the birthday card. And I had not, I've owned this stamp set for quite some time, but I hadn't used it. Um, so I decided that this is going to be the birthday cards that I made for my father-in-law and my brother-in-law. I originally thought that I was going to do a slimline and an A2. I didn't end up doing a slimline. I ended up doing two A2s. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to color the whole image before I change my mind and make it an A2. Um, so if you buy a set like this, you don't necessarily have to make it a slimline. You could use a portion of the um, stamp and it's still large enough to carry a whole card, as you will see here when I stamp this down momentarily. Um, it's, it's a good size image, which I like because it means I can have a little bit of fun with my coloring. It means that I don't have to worry so much about uh, my card composition or what's kind of going on in the background because my focal point is so upfront um, that it, it really just carries my whole card and makes my whole process a little easier. So in this set, there is also um, like a topping, a solid stamp, and you can stamp the um, topping first, mask it, and then stamp your ice cream over it. Even I, a lover of fussy cutting and masking, uh, am too lazy for that. So I'm going to show you a little trick to kind of get around it. So I have just a um, chocolate colored ink. I am stamping in that. I ended up stamping it two times. It is transparent. You can still see the black lines through it. You won't be able to by the time we're done because when you are a person who is too lazy to do the thing the right way, man, you got a trick to get around it. And I do. I have a trick to get around it. So for the backgrounds, like I said, I wasn't worried too much about them. I created a mask out of my Eclipse masking paper, and I'm just going to do a little bit of ink blending. Nothing crazy, just kind of a little gradient to make the backgrounds a little bit more interesting. Um... I chose, I'm sure you're shocked, <laughs> I chose a blue um, combination featuring this Uncharted Mariner yet again. I'm totally in love with it. Um, and so I used Speckled Egg, Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, and Uncharted Mariner. And um, I just kind of took it up uh, more on the right hand side to kind of like a little diagonal. And again, this is just to create a little bit more interest in the background. You have seen me dozens, hundreds, millions of times do the, um, I did speed this up. I'm not quite this fast at the ink blending. Um, do the like water flicks in the background or flicking the, like spattering the perfect pearls. You could also do that in the background. I chose not to. I liked how um, kind of clean the gradient looked and then it really made your eye focus on the ice cream, which was the point of the card. Know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, these were, it was a, it was a good time. Um, I do like the way the cards came out because sometimes it's just nice to sit down and kind of, you know, play around with how you color, how you approach things or, um, and then after I was done, I presented them to Peanut and I let him choose, uh, which person got which card because they were both sufficient. And then the card that you, I did the video for, um, last, the, uh, the cupcake one was for, uh, my sister-in-law, Mallory. So that one was already taken care of. So he just had to pick between these two. I'm going to use the same mask for this card background. And for this one, I just stuck with some browns and a little bit of black. Could you use a darker brown? 100%. Absolutely. I could have used, a uh, ground espresso or a walnut stain in the distress inks, um, but I couldn't find it. So I just went with black and it worked out just fine. <laughs> so kind of the same premise here, um, you know, just doing like a lighter to darker gradient from the top to bottom. You could, of course, always switch that up if you would like the top to be darker and the bottom to be lighter. Um, you know, just whatever, whatever you're feeling, whatever kind of vibe you, you got going on that day. And then once this portion is done, we will move on to the um, Copa coloring. I chose to 
stick to, I mean, I mean, it's ice cream. You know what I mean? You've only got so many flavors. I chose to stick to pretty basic flavors. I myself love a twist cone. Um, and so that's the first one up here is the twist cone. Plus it's more fun to look at. You know what I'm saying? So you all are going to think I'm crazy if you've never watched my videos before and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, your vanilla ice cream is gray. Nobody wants gray ice cream. Um, and you would be right. I think if your ice cream is gray, you probably should not eat it. Um, there might have something might have gone awry. But I promise you by the time we're done, it will look white. It's just because we're adding in the shadows of a white object that it does get a little bit darker. Um, and especially when your rest of your image is still white, it does make it very challenging to see the grays as white shadows, as the object is white. Um, but I am just adding the shadows. There's so, there's so much direction in this particular stamp set, the way that the illustrator has drawn it, that you could just kind of follow the lines that are already there. Um, you want to add shading where two points meet. You want to add shading where one object lays on top of the other. And so ice cream, obviously, as it's coming out of the machine, all of it's laying on top of each other. So it's a good opportunity to kind of practice your shading and see um, what kind of depth and dimension you can get. For my white, I chose to use three colors. I went with the warmer grays versus the cooler grays. Um, I just felt like that looked more vanilla-y. Um, and I thought it would blend in a little bit better with my chocolate ice cream, since those would also be warm colors. Um, so yeah, just adding in the shadows. I always color lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. Well, I shouldn't say always. That's a lie. Most of the time most often I go lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. Sometimes I do switch it up. But in this case, I did not. I stuck with my traditional approach and it does look really dark. I know that. Um, but once we start adding in these browns in here and kind of blending everything together, uh, plus the color for the cone, I think that you'll be surprised at how white it does look. Since my waffle cone is going to be brown, um, I wanted to make sure that I chose two different browns, that they weren't going to be the same color. And so I went with the 25 family because I think it's, I think it is E25, um, like the 20s family, because one of them is actually called milk chocolate. And I was like, well, that's what we're going with. And then I went with the uh, E50 families, which is just a little bit warmer for the cone. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So um, why do I love a twist cone? You know, it's kind of got the best of both worlds. But for me, it is tied to my childhood. <laughs> and um, that is why I prefer the twist cone. So Graham used to live on the corner of a super busy street. And um, like, it, it was a main, main street. Like you would lay there in bed and you could listen to the semis drive by. Um, and the street lights would shine in the windows and all that jazz. But on the just down the street on a she lived on a side street off this main road but then there was a main intersection that was just up the street totally within walking distance and it had a like fresh fruit produce kind of shop um where you could go in there in the summer and get you know fresh produce that was grown from local farmers and then attached to that was an ice cream place it was a very teeny tiny ice cream place. There was no like way to get inside. You just had to go up to like this drive through window, but it was a walk up window in the parking lot. And um, we used to go there. We used to walk there all the time in the summer to get ice cream. And because it was just like this little place, there were not a lot of options. And so I always got a twist cone. And that's, so I just, I have a preference for them, I guess, <laughs> because I have that nostalgic memory that is tied to it of, you know, going there all the time with my childhood. In fact, we, when we were on vacation, we went putt-putt and then afterward we got ice cream and um, we were talking, you know, because they, of course, this place has all of the options. Um, you could get a bowl, you can get a regular cone, you can get a waffle cone, um, frozen yogurt versus ice cream. I still don't understand the difference. Let's talk about the card real quick. Um, so here I'm going to go in with my colorless blender just to do a little work in the center to kind of blend these two flavors together. Um, 
because it is kind of, sometimes kind of hard to get enough shading and still have them blend. So I just went over it real quick with the colorless blender to kind of lighten everything up and I was happy with the way that it blended. Here's this E50 family I told you about. The waffle cone wraps around on itself. And so you have that point where they meet and one is laying on top of the other, right in the center of the cone. So I, you guys know this, this is not new if you've been here before, but I always color as if my light source is in the top right hand corner. And so that is how I colored my cone as if it was, my shadows would be down and to the left. Um, there, that does get a little tricky with the bottom of the cone. Um, just because it's all kind of naturally going to be a little bit darker because it's smaller. I also added shading inside these little squares because in a traditional waffle cone, those are inset and so they would have a little bit more shading. Now, as I add each individual color, I will add more shading um, to the squares. Basically, how I chose to shade them was I, I shaded with one color um, before it. So if I was, the lightest color is E53, those squares were shaded with E55. If the color was E55, those squares were shaded with E57, so on and so forth. I hope that makes sense, uh, especially with watching it being done at the same time. Um, so yeah, so w when we went to get ice cream, we, um, you know, they had the option. I just got, uh, chocolate, um, frozen frozen yogurt and then peanut got a banana whip which looks like soft serve ice cream but I don't know what the whip part is and then uh, you know what I'm not even sure what Eric got because <laughs> what no oh a dream sickle that's what he got so it was like a twist cone but it was like half orange and half vanilla um and they did have waffle cones um so we were talking about it and I honestly didn't know so I asked him I was like is your preferred like is you like a prefer a regular cone or a waffle cone and Eric prefers a waffle cone I prefer a regular cone um it's no secret my husband loves ice cream more than I love ice cream um I do enjoy ice cream from time to time but typically I have to get a small because I'm usually sick of it before I even get to the end and that is what always happened when I was younger <laughs> when I was younger and I would get my little twist cone and my regular cone um I would end up like pitch in half the um, ice cream like halfway down just so I could eat the cone because I love all carbohydrates equally um, unless we're talking about healthy carbohydrates like broccoli and then I do love them but not quite as much as bread um, but anyway so now for this card I am going to color it uh, with vanilla ice cream as if it had a um, like kind of chocolate hot fudge on it um, and while I don't love ice cream, I do love all the toppings. <laughs> I love like the hot fudge and the caramel. And so sometimes I'll get a banana split just because I really want the bananas with the hot chocolate and the ice cream's just kind of there, just kind of an extra thing. Um, but yeah, all the toppings are delicious. Ice creams, okay. Um, yeah, so this is, this is not a personal story, but it was one that I was reading and it reminded me of my sisters. And so I wanted to tell it because I thought it was funny. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit fitting um, because, you know, we're talking about like more masculine birthday cards. So I was watching this and it's an old interview. Okay. It popped up on my YouTube. Um, and it's an interview with Jimmy Fallon, Chris Evans, and Scott Evans. If you don't know who either of these people are, it's fine. I had no idea Chris Evans had a brother. Chris Evans is Captain America. For those of you who don't know, don't be a don't be ashamed. I only know him as Captain America. I'm sure he's done a bunch of other stuff, but I don't know what it is. And I surely do not know what his brother has been in. Um, but nonetheless, they were on the show and they were playing this game. You know, Jimmy Fallon likes to play the games and um, they're all very funny and I'm totally here for it. Let's talk about the card real quick. So here I am going over the stamping for the topping with my darker browns. This is not going to completely cover up the black line, but it will mask it quite a bit. Um, and then I gave myself a bit of a blonder waffle cone just to kind of keep that contrast so everything wasn't this just one note brown and very just 
meh. Um, so I am adding the shading. I typically try to leave a lighter spot where it would be dripping um, because that's where you would have a highlight or some shine. If you do not leave that area um, lighter, don't worry about it. You can add it back in with a white gel pen because I'm going to do that. You'll be able to see it. So anywho, they're playing this game where they have to see how well they know each other. This is not a new game or a new premise. One of them puts on headphones, the other sibling is asked a question, and then um, they have to answer. So they go back and forth about a couple of, you know, oh, if he wasn't an actor, what would he be? Um, if, you know, those types of things. Um, but the last question, this is the one I was like, oh my gosh, if that was my sister's, I don't even know. I don't even know. So the last question is to Chris and his brother Scott has the headphones on and he says to him, um, what is Scott's most embarrassing moment? Now, if you have siblings, if you have a significant other, a best friend, you if somebody asks you what their most embarrassing moment is, I would be willing to bet nine times out of 10, you know what that is. But the question is, do you share it on national television? I think that my sisters would murder me if in the course of playing this game, I actually revealed their most embarrassing moment. So you almost kind of have to go with their second most embarrassing moment because their most embarrassing moment would be horrendous. Here is where I decided that um, I was going to trim it down to more of an A2 size card um, and I just cut off that bottom portion. This um, ice cream is just a little bit taller than the other one and that's fine. Here's me adding those white gel pen highlights. I am also going to add them to the ice cream. So anyway, he asks him, what is his most embarrassing moment? This guy <laughs> proceeds to tell everybody in existence that his brother's most embarrassing moment is he was five. They went on a family ski trip and his brother, though potty trained, often had some accidents. So they're skiing on the hill and he's like, you know, dad, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. Um, so they get back to the lodge. Kid doesn't make it. And so the underwear thrown in the trash. They go back out to ski. Dad, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. He doesn't make it. Now, Long John's in the trash. Now, they're down to just like this kid's ski pants and nothing else. And they're waiting to leave. They're, you know, the, the car's coming around. They're waiting. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. And this poor kid, again, just does not make it. Now, he has just told everybody in existence that his grown brother, who is an actor for a living that he pooped his pants three different times in like a matter of two hours when he was five years old. If one of my sisters did this to me, I don't know that I would be able to forgive them. Back to the card. So here is the trick, okay, for completely covering up the black lines, colored pencils, because they're going to be opaque they're going to um, just completely cover up those lines. And I'm going to color it the same way that I did the markers, leaving that highlighted area. Um, so I kind of, you know, added my darkest shading at the bottom um, and around where the, like where it's laying on the actual ice cream, filled it in with a slightly lighter brown and then did my white highlight on top of that to blend it in. And I'm going to do them all that way. Um, this works for pretty much anything that you would want to be completely solid and cover up your black line. Uh, if you've been working with lighter colors, though, you might have to work, a, you know, just put down some extra layers of pencil, but it should cover. I also went in on this particular card and just added a little bit of extra shading with the colored pencil um, to just kind of get in those little nooks and crannies and, and make the coloring pop. Um, now both the cards are done and I'm going to heat emboss the sentiments. Please, 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 please. Either dry your distress ink backgrounds with a heat tool or wait until the next day. Always, and this time I mean always, 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 check to make sure that your embossing powder does not stick to your background before you do your sentiment because it's made to stay wet, it's made to emboss with. So you have to be very careful when you're putting on that many layers of ink. So anyway, the guy takes off the headphones and Jimmy says, what's your most embarrassing moment? 
this poor dude who doesn't know that his brothers just told everybody that he's pooped his pants three times as a five-year-old starts telling another story about how like when he's 10 him and his brother and his sister were out um like driving around and had stopped and gotten something to eat and he was like guys I gotta go to the bathroom I gotta go to the bathroom and they're like no you're gonna make it you're gonna make it and he's like no nah, I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna make it <laughs> and so as siblings do they're going back and forth and they refuse to pull over the car to let this poor child go to the bathroom and he has yet another accident so now not only does the entire world know that as a child as a five-year-old he has pooped his pants three times in public now he's told everybody himself that as a 10 year old he did it again though that time wasn't really his fault because he tried to tell them and they didn't stop but i know my sisters know my most embarrassing moments and i know my sisters i cannot believe that they would ever go on national television and tell everybody my most embarrassing moments especially as somebody who's in the public eye i mean honestly i, I and he was totally chill about it like oh yeah yeah that story yeah that makes sense no what I don't know super chill guy like good for him I was dying laughing like at the rendition of the story I would recommend that you look it up it is a video that you can watch on YouTube um but I was just like so shocked and astonished because I know what my relationship is with my sisters and I just cannot imagine a world that exists where we're in this situation unless maybe it was for like millions of dollars I would let them tell my most embarrassing moments on tv if they were going to get millions of dollars out of it I would sacrifice that for them but otherwise nah fam that's a secret that's a secret among sisters and you keep it to yourself so here I originally had that card set up to be a slimline card which means that it's a little bit smaller um I could cut the length to five and a half but I could not expand the width to four and a quarter so here what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating my own colored cardstock with this uncharted mariner I'm going to cut just a little strip of it um so that I have a I guess a more cohesive card design so I'm going to glue this flat down to um a white card base and then I'm going to add just this little line of um this darkest color which is the you know uncharted mariner um to I guess kind of frame it in to fill in that space so it looks like it's supposed to go um, and I'm just going to take my glue and run it right down um, the line there and then put on my piece of custom colored cardstock a navy probably would have worked for this as well um, I had a hard time kind of lining it up and so I ended up like peeling it off and trying to put it on again it was a smidge shorter than my card and so I did end up having to trim it um I did that off camera I did up end up having to trim the bottom just a just a little bit so that everything would line up perfectly um but yeah see now it looks more put together with that little line of course I'm going to add the shimmers going to add the glitters um even on a masculine card I cannot help myself and then the last thing that I am going to do is for this topping I'm going to go in with some glossy accents um glossy accents lasts forever I've had this bottle for I can't even remember how long um because a little goes a long way if you're using it and you get some air bubbles you can use a needle to pop them and if you do it right away it'll just reabsorb it um so you won't even see the little like holes that you would poke if you wait until after the fact you can't see them but then that's going to dry to like a hard glossy finish and then that's it that's both cards so thank you guys so much for joining me I hope that you learned a little something laughed a little bit and I will catch you on the next video bye